Hey, so I'm Steve Croft, and I'm here with Peter Walter, the 2018 Breakthrough Prize uh, Laureate in Life Sciences. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I understand you're a sculptor, and I uh, wondered when you first got interested in sculpture. Oh, it started uh, a long time ago. Um, my dad, my family had a little work studio at home, and we just uh, used to do all sorts of handiwork, and it evolved over the time to become bigger and bigger, and now I make large sculptures, which are just a lot of fun to do. And does the sculpture sort of tie in with your professional work at all, the way that you kind of see the world in, in three dimensions? Yeah, it, it sort of, it, it ties nicely together because it's, both of them are very creative uh, uh, endeavors and uh, they, they make you think out of the box. And it's, it's just, it's a great, great way of expressing um, yourself, both science mm -hmm. and art. Do you have any artistic heroes? Um, I guess uh, the, the, the artists who really, really broke paradigm, um, the, the, the classical Monet, Picasso, and so on. Um, it's absolutely fascinating to see how people think beyond what used to be the, 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 the rules at the time. Do you have any scientific heroes? Well, the scientific heroes that touched me personally are my PhD advisor, uh, Günter Blobel, who was just incredibly inf influential uh, to my career. And then I, when I started my own lab at USCSF, there were so many colleagues who shared their wisdom um, and uh, in a very generous way. Ira Herskovitz, for example, the late Ira Herskovitz, um, uh, he introduced us to the power of genetics and pretty much made everything uh, possible that, that we then accomplished in the lab. And so many colleagues around me, that these are my heroes. And do you think um, progress in science is more about working away little by little at a problem or is it about the big leaps in understanding? So for me it's the working little by little into into increase understanding and the leaps come from the data, from what we've, what we've seen. Usually the work we do in the lab is, is incremental and then we pay attention to little things that don't make sense on the side of the road um, and we explore those because these are the unexpected, the paradoxes mm -hmm. um, that then lead to major new insights that are just absolutely unpredictable. What's the mixture of age and experience in your lab? Um, they're all young people, uh, so postdocs, graduate students, about 50-50 in the lab. Um, and they come in, and it's one of the wonderful things about our profession is that it keeps you young by surrounding yourself mm -hmm. constantly with a new influx of uh, uh, new talent, people who are um, training to become scientists, exploring themselves, whether they can uh, enjoy what they're doing on a, on, a, on a road that not necessarily has a defined ending, that is exploration, we are explorers. What are the key things that you look for in a young person who wants to join your lab? Um, I think one of the key aspects in, in young people, so the recipe for success, is just the enthusiasm for, for, for discovery, for wanting to explore, and being able to deal with, uh, uh, with frustration because 95% of stuff we do doesn't work. <laughs> and they have to deal with it and go on and just still have fun in the process. Right. Um, so tell us a little bit about the work for which you've been recognized. Um, so we've been studying protein quality control. Um, proteins are the major actors in the cell that carry out um, pretty much all the, the tasks that make life on Earth possible. Um, and sometimes they... Uh, uh, they do not assemble properly, so proteins are made initially as linear chains of uh, amino acid subunits, and they have to fold into three-dimensional shapes. And this, if these process, folding processes um, don't uh, uh, go uh, according to, to plan, you make mis cells make mistakes, um, and then these mistakes have to be recognized, and uh, the cell takes corrective action. Um, and we've basically uh, looked at the machinery that recognizes a perfectly assembled protein from a misfolded protein 
and then gives the clues of how to regulate the folding processes. What makes this an exciting field for you? Excitement in the field is is um, to un to go somewhere where nobody has gone before. Uh, there are more questions than there are answers at any stage in, in our process. And what we've learned over the time is that the basic mechanisms by which these processes are, are controlled are conserved all the way from, from brewer's yeast uh, to, to human cells. So what we've learned in uh, model systems and discovered in these, in these unicellular um, simple, simple cells uh, holds true for, for our cells also and has connections to many different human diseases um, where these processes can go wrong. So you're unlocking some of the sort of fundamental mechanisms of life itself. Precisely, yeah. precisely. Some of the fundamental, for how is order achieved and, and how, is, um, how is the genetic information translated into making little molecular machines that make the cell work and how is these processes controlled. So in the 19th century, scientists discovered the rules of heredity and then in the 20th century began to understand the structure of DNA. What do you think the sort of biggest unsolved problem uh, that we'll solve in your field in the 21st century will be? I think in our field, one of the really big questions is what, what are the precise rules that make proteins forward? We still cannot predict this with 100% with certainty on first principles um, how a chain uh, encodes the information to form this three-dimensional structure that makes a protein work. And by understanding that, we're going to understand what can go wrong in these processes and uh, how it affects disease and how we can uh, correct these, these, these defects. What kind of diseases do you think uh, this has the greatest promise for? Well, diseases, uh, protein, protein quality control is uh, regulated in multicellular organisms in, in a way um, that is actually diminishes over time as we age. Um, so many of the age-related diseases, so, so late-onset diseases, neurodegeneration, cancer, um, have strong connections to the protein folding process, um, and we hope we can do something about it. Mm -hmm. So I noticed you brought uh, a model with you. Do you want to uh, yeah. so explain to us? A, so this is one of the, the, the structures we solved in, in, in the lab. And it is a protein domain um, that recognizes unfolded proteins. So the, the, the question is simply how can a molecule, uh, a protein molecule, the sensors uh, decide whether a protein is properly folded or not. And what you can see is that it has this little groove in the middle in the structure here. And if you have a protein that's not so perfectly folded, it just binds in here. And then uh, uh, this is the recognition event that then leads to a signal um, being generated in the cell that tells the cells, do something about it. So it's sort of a lock and a key. Um, well, it's a very flexible lock and key. Uh -huh. You have to think of this much more dynamic. This thing is flipping mm -hmm. around, but mm -hmm. occasionally it binds here. And then that sends a signal downstream um, that tells the cell, either fix the problem, or you're just, uh, uh, it doesn't work, so uh, initiate a suicide program so you don't uh, contaminate the body as a rogue cell that potentially does the wrong thing. Sort of a quality control system in the cellular Absolutely. factory. Absolutely, yeah. a quality control system that makes sure everything's just perfect. Great. Well, thanks very much for sharing your work with us. And again, congratulations. Thank you so much.